Hi again, I'd like to continue talking about JavaScript and uh, templates. And in the last couple of videos, we um, you know, gave an overview of the project and we set up our, our files and then we created this template here in the last video. And we, we essentially deleted you know, all of this from our project. So now we just have this kind of one copy of this list item that we want to create, right? Um, but, you know, this list item is going to become a template, right? So what we need to do in order to use handlebars is we need to compile this text into a JavaScript function that will return to us a string that is the template data, right? So it'll be all of this stuff. And what we'll do when we use this function is we'll pass an object in that has properties that fit these little elements that we've, you know, the handlebar variables that we created inside the template, right? And then the, 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 the compiling function will compile this text into, you know, some HTML text that we can use in the page, right? And replace these items with the values from our, our, our properties, right? So how do you do that? Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is this. We're going to follow the handlebar site. Let's take a look at their site really quick, right? So this is the template that we've created. You know, we, ours is a little bit different, but it's just, it's similar to this, right? And then you can see this step down here. It says compile template in JavaScript using handlebars.compile, right? So what they're doing is they're using jQuery here to grab the HTML text from this, the element with this ID. And in this example, that element is, is the template, right? So they're just going to grab the text. The HTML text is all of this, right? Okay, and so the source right here is just, you know, you can think of it as a string that is just all of this text inside the template. And so to compile that into a, into a, a template, you say handlebars.compile and then your, your source string. And then this template right here, this variable is a function that will return the, the, the template to you. Okay, and you can see they're going to use it. Let's find an example where they use that, right? Um, where did they do it here? Well, I guess they did it, um, yeah, I guess here's, this is the example right here, right? So, you know, here's a JavaScript object with title and body properties, and then here's the template that they created, and so context is this JavaScript object, and so they're passing that object in, and then the template returns HTML that looks like this, and if you recall, you know, title my new post, this was the, the, the area where we had the handlebars variable, and then inside the body we had the other handlebars variable. So if we look up here, you can see the H1, that's the title, and this is the body. So these guys are getting their values from the context, and the context has properties of title and body, right? Okay, so let's apply this to, to our project, okay? So I'm going to go into main.js, Okay, and I'll open it up here, and I'm going to compile the template at the very top of the page, so it's done before anything else. So I'll say var, um, and I'm going to call it product template, okay, because this will display the products on my page. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say handlebars.compile, okay, and then I'll need the source you know, the HTML source for the template, right? So if you recall, in index HTML, our script tag right here has an ID called product template, right? So we'll call on this ID name right here. You know, we could actually just put the whole thing inside, you know, inside the parentheses here, but it's kind of easier if we do, um, let's call that product source, right? It'll be easier if we do it on this line, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, uh, jQuery, and then I'll target that element, that script tag, with this ID name, right? So I, you know, I use the hash mark there, and I use the ID name. And then I'll say .html to get the HTML text, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to compile this product source into a handlebars template. So we say handlebars.compile this source material right here into a template. Okay? There we go. Right? Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to do the detail template too, 
but let's try this template out right now and see if it works, right? So how do we get the template to show up? Well, remember our template, um, we want to put it, like once we compile it, we want to put it into this, this UL right here, okay? And it has an ID name of list, right? Probably should have called that product list. It would have been a better name, but uh, list is a little too generic. But anyway, we want to put it here, right? So what we'll do is we'll say um, list, right? And then I want to set the HTML of list, okay? And what I want to set it to is the product template, right? And like I said before, product template is a, f is, is a function, so we need to call on it with the parentheses, and it takes one parameter, right? And that parameter, parameter is an object, and the properties of this object need to be the values that you put into the, into the template at, inside the handlebar you know, those little handlebar um, curly braces, right? So like when I look at the template here, the properties that I need to define are ID, image, uh, name, and uh, price, right? So uh, let's take a quick look at this, right? We'll just give it a quick test. Um, so let's go back to main here. And so what if I just wanted to put name and, uh, you know, put hello world here. And then if I did, um, you know, let's do image, right? Um, let's do price, actually, it'll be shorter. So I'll just type price and I'll do $1.99, okay? So uh, so how does this work? Well, we'll save our page. Let's, this is probably a good time to test because we have any if we have any errors here, um, they'll show up now. Um, so let's, uh, let's go back to our page here. We got the console open just in case there's any errors and then let's refresh it. Oh, so I got some. Pro I still got that problem with that SVG thing. We'll fix that later. But uh, um, but anyway, my my template shows up here, and you can see it says "Hello World," and there's the dollar ninety nine price. I didn't set the image property, so the image doesn't show up. Right now, if you recall, this right here is part of the object data that we created earlier, right? Because the object data here has name and price and description and image and ID. It has all the properties that we defined in our template, right? So uh, so how do we use those, right? Well, let's go back to main. And so instead of just doing one template where I put the put the, the object here, why don't we why don't we make an array uh, I mean a, a, a loop and loop through the array of data here and make one copy of the template for each one of the items in in this array, right? So let's see, let's do that. So we'll say, you know, four and I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to say for var i in uh, data, okay? And then we'll say um, var, you know, uh, let's just call it product equals, and then I'll, I'll, I'll do the template here. So I'll say product template, right? And then the object that I want to get is in the array, right? So I'll say data bracket item i. Right, because there's you know uh, a bunch of items in this array, you know a bunch of objects in there, and when we do this for loop, the i is the index of the item in the array. So I'm saying give me the item at index i, and then we loop, and then we get the item at the next index. Right. So now we've got the the HTML text. Right. And so what we'll do is we'll just append it to the list. Right. So we'll say uh, list dot append product okay so here we're going to generate the html text from the template for each product in data and each time that product or that you know template copy will be in here in the product variable and then we'll append that means add to the end like add to what's there so each time we loop we'll add a new product to the list Okay, so let's save that and give it a try. So I'll refresh it here. Oh, look, there's all my products, right? Um, and then they show up and they've got their price and they've got their name. 
okay? So that's kind of working and the picture's showing up too, right? Hey, that's a lot better maybe, you know, than before for a couple reasons, right? If you wanted to add a new product, you can just define the product here by, you know, copying this little block of code and making another object with these properties, right, and different values. You don't have to edit your HTML. And if you want to edit the products, you know, if you have to make a change to them, you only need to make it in one place. Like before, I would need to have edited nine of these, right, to make a change. Um, so anyway, so hopefully that's helpful to you. And then maybe in the last video, I'll do the detail view and we'll apply the same, the same process to the detail view. Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, see you later.